Hey, what's up YouTube? Today I'm going to talk about animation data modifiers. They are great and people don't necessarily know about them, so I thought I'd do a quick video on them and release a small Unreal Engine project that includes a couple of neat examples on my Patreon as a tier 2 reward. So, what are they? Well, animation modifiers provide a way to procedurally add or remove some kind of data to your animations, whether it be sync markers, notify events, curve tracks, custom values, or even add or remove virtual bones. Here's the basic run cycle included in Unreal Engine, and there I have listed all my modifiers I want to apply, and so take note at what happens when I click apply. All those markers were created, and those two curves as well. These two sync markers in green were added to let the animation system know which foot is currently the forward foot. If you do that on all your animations, you'll have much smoother blend transitions. Those sync markers are added when the foot bone passes in front of the pelvis in the forward axis. Same for my custom anim notify to let me know which foot is the forward foot in case I want to drive some kind of animation blending logic myself or whatever. That other notify event here automatically plays a sound, but you may spawn a particle system or whatever, it's an example. It's added when the foot reaches its lowest point, so when it's closest to the ground. Now it may not necessarily describe the best time to trigger that sound, so I can offset the time at which those events are placed to have further control. Here, those two curves let me know if a specific foot is planted based on some kind of high threshold. That may be useful to drive your IK setup or whatever. Anim data modifiers are quite easy to use, and they may be very powerful as you can see, and they can definitely help you push your animation workflow one step further. Alright, let's check how to make your own animation data modifier. First, you'll have to create a blueprint based on the animation modifier class. It says it's an experimental class, which it is still. It was added in Unreal Engine 4.16 but I've used them every now and then since they were made available, and so besides a couple of minor issues, I never ever had any undesired behavior with them, so I'd argue they are really stable, so don't be afraid of that little warning. Now, that being said, we'll want to implement two events, the onApply event and eventually the onRevert event as well. Both will give you a pointer to the animation sequence the anim modifier is trying to well modify. And so by using that pointer, we can get access to all kinds of cool functions and start building our own logic to tweak the animation's data. You can also make variables, and any variable made instance editable will show on that animations panel once you add that animation modifier you just created to that list. And yes, you guessed it, when you click apply, your anim modifier's on apply event will fire, and same for the on revert. On revert may be used to undo whatever you did during on apply. For instance, you may have added a curve track which you'd want to remove, and on revert will be where you would do that. And that's kinda all there is to it. Now, it gets complicated when you want to build a complex logic to add an event based on some rules, like my foot forward trigger here, when that foot bones goes in front of the pelvis. It's nothing too crazy, but what complicates things is the space transformation you need to do to convert the bones data from local space to component space. What do I mean by that? Well, the node you will most likely be interested in is that one, or that one eventually. They both output the transform of one or multiple bones at a specific time during the animation in local space, and that confused me a bit at first. Like, I wanted the transform of my foot bone, and I expected the location I got from that node to be, well, the location of that foot bone. But it's in local space, meaning relative to its parent, and that was giving me a zero location, and rightfully so, because the foot bone, relative to the calf bone, hasn't moved. It's not like my character dislocated its ankle and the foot is out of its socket, right? It stays in place, relative to the calf bone, and so the location I had from that node was zero, and it is indeed zero. What you have to do to convert that to a world space location is all in all relatively simple, but isn't super straightforward at first either. You start by finding the bone path to the root, 
that will output the list of all bones starting from the specified bone all the way up to the root bone so here it be foot, calf, thigh, pelvis and root in that order once you have that list you loop through them all to walk up the bone chain and compose transforms at each step it's a bit hard to picture and explain but it's like saying hey what's my foot location relative to the calf Okay, it's that because the calves rotated on scaled or whatever. And now what's that transform relative to the thigh? And what's the transform of that relative to the pelvis and so on? And you finally end up with a location in component space. Once you have that data, you can do all kinds of things, like find the time at which a bone is at its lowest or highest position or whatever and add a marker there. So let's see that in details. Here's the anim modifier used to create those curves. First step, check if the curve exists. If not, create it. Now, does bone name exist seems to be bugged. It always returns false for some reason. So don't mind that. I wanted a safety check here, but it's no big deal. If you give the animation modifier a bone that doesn't exist in your skeleton, it will see that and display an error anyway, so it's safe. Anyway, here I get the bone chain. Here's the animation's length. Here I may choose to sample the animation for each frame or using a specific rate. Why is that? Well, I probably want a notify trigger or a sync marker to be quite precise and so I may need to add one in between frames. So I can do that here. It's a pretty simple setup. It basically says, hey, I want to step forward x amount of seconds per sample and based on the animation's length, how many samples does that make me do? and you use that to march forward in time and sample the entire animation at a fixed rate using a for loop. And then here I compute the bones transform in component space like I explained. Once I have my bones location in component space, or world space really, I may select an axis and write that value to a curve. Let's check that with the pelvis for example. Here I have a curve that describes the pelvis Z location in world space, right? You can see that it goes up and down in sync with the animation, so I know it works as expected. Now that may not be super useful on its own, so I added this remap curve that you may specify to remap this value. And this is what I did for the foot planted curves here. It basically allows me to say, hey, if my foot is 20 centimeters or more above ground, the curve value should be zero. And when it's 5 cm or less, curve value should be 1, and I have a linear blend in between, so the curve isn't just a 0 and 1 binary state, and that gives me those smooth foot-planted curves that are really useful to drive your IK setup. I hope it made sense. I'm going to walk you through a second modifier I made. It's the one I use to tell when a bone passes in front of another bone. It's essentially the same principle though, do a couple of checks, add the notified track if it doesn't exist yet, get the bone chain for both the specified bone and the bone I want to test against, so let's say my foot bone and my pelvis bone. Here it's just the same setup to do a for loop and sample the animation at a fixed rate. Then I compute the pelvis bone's location in component space and do the same thing for the foot bone's location and that lets me compare the two. Now here, the first time I do this, for the very first frame of the animation, I compare the two bones, like is my foot bone in front or behind the pelvis bone, and I catch the result in a boolean. Then for the remaining of the animation, I continue to compare those two bones, and if I detect that my foot bone is in front or behind the pelvis, and it was not before, it means it has passed it in one way or another, and that's when I add my notify event. Voila, the other two modifiers I made both use the same principle, so I won't go over them. But yeah, there's no limit to the logic you can build here. You can go quite crazy and add all kinds of data to your animations based on all kinds of rules, so it's really powerful. That's it, I hope it helps some of you guys. Again, the project is available on my Patreon, the Chachu Reward. Speaking of Patreon, I just released some more stylized rocks, the Chachu Reward as well in case that's something you'd be interested in. I took the time to build a proper master material that allows you to build quite a few variants quite easily, so definitely check it out. Anyway, thanks for watching, consider leaving a like and subscribe to the channel if you liked the content. 
I'll see you in the next video. Take care of yourself. Bye bye.